Princess Eugenie wowed royal fans across the globe when she walked down the aisle in her stunning Peter Pilato wedding dress at St. George's Chapel today. How did Princess Eugenie's dress compare to Meghan Markle's? Princess Eugenie arrived at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle in a gorgeous gown fit for a royal ahead of her wedding to Jack Brooks Bank. She was wearing a white portrait neckline gown by Peter Piloto and Christopher DeVoe the bride looked gorgeous. The brand is known for its innovative textile design, paired with a modern, feminine silhouette. Eugenie also plumped for a low back, proudly showing off the scar of the scoliosis surgery she underwent at the age of 12. Today's big reveal ends months of speculation on who Eugenie would wear when she walks down the aisle to marry Jack Brooks Bank. When Meghan Markle married Prince Harry in May, she wore a haute couture gown designed by British fashion designer Claire Waite Keller, currently the artistic director of Givenchy. They both chose elegant and simple design, but Eugenie's dress had a few more details. The two also borrowed a tiara from the Queen for their big day. The Duchess of Sussex, 37, said she chose to work with Ems Keller for her timeless and elegant aesthetic, impeccable tailoring and relaxed demeanor. The minimalist design was praised for its open-bottom neckline, offering just a peek of the Duchess' shoulders while also framing her slender silhouette. Meghan's wedding dress, with its 16-feet train and veil which was adorned with the flowers of the 53 Commonwealth Count tires, is estimated to have cost a whopping £387,000. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry glowed as they returned to the site of their own royal wedding for Princess Eugenie's big day. Meghan beamed as she attended her first major royal wedding with her new husband since that day, and stunned onlookers with her fashion choice. Harry remained close to his wife's side, constantly smiling towards Meghan and the cheering crowds. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex married at St. George's Chapel in the famous castle during a glittering ceremony on May 19, welcomed by thousands of royal enthusiasts along the streets of Windsor and the ceremony watched by millions of people around the world on television. Despite only marrying Harry five months ago, Meghan has often been pictured getting along well with her cousin-in-law Eugenie. Eugenie also worked closely with Mr. Pilato and Mr. DeVoe on the design of the dress. The fabric was designed by Mr. Pilato and Mr. DeVoe at their studio in East London and includes a number of symbols that are meaningful to Princess Eugenie as motifs. The symbols are a thistle for Scotland acknowledging the couple's fondness for Balmoral, a shamrock for Ireland as a nod to the bride's Ferguson family, the York Rose and Ivy representing the couple's home. Peter Pilato and Christopher DeVoe have reinterpreted these symbols in a garland of rope-like motifs woven into a jack heart of silk, cotton and viscose blend. Sarah Ferguson could pay a touching tribute to her close friend the late Princess Diana at her daughter Princess Eugenie's wedding next week, according to a royal expert. Richard Fitzwilliams, royal commentator, said that the Duchess of York may well choose one of Diana's favorite hymns to play at the October 12th wedding which would please her nephews Prince William and Prince Harry. The hymn I Vow to Thee My Country would be significant because it was sung at both Princess Diana's 1981 royal wedding to Prince Charles and her funeral after she died in a car crash in 1997. Mr Fitzwilliams told Express.co.uk, Sarah may well pay a tribute to Diana. They were famously friendly though they subsequently fell out. A gesture would undoubtedly please William and Harry. She might choose a hymn which Diana was fond of such as I Vow to Thee My Country which was sung at Diana's wedding and funeral. The Princess of Wales said the hymn had always been the favourite since school days. Sarah Ferguson, also known as Fergie, and Diana quickly became close after marrying into the royals at young ages, so it will be surprise if the Duchess honours the princess at her daughter's wedding. Daughter's Wedding the sisters-in-law even had a divorce pact to end their unhappy marriages with their husbands, Prince Charles and Prince Andrew. Fergie, 58, is poised for her royal comeback at her daughter's royal wedding next week and has enthusiastically thrown herself into wedding planning.
Prince Andrew's ex-wife was blacklisted by members of the firm back in 1992 when pictures emerged of the redhead receiving a toe-sucking from oil tycoon John Bryan. But the Duchess has maintained a close relationship with her nephews, especially Prince Harry, who made sure Fergie was at his royal wedding to Meghan Markle in May. Mr. Fitzwilliams added, Sarah Ferguson has made a seismic effort to regain some of the royal favor she so catastrophically lost. This wedding is her chance to excel. Sarah Ferguson is busy preparing for her role as mother of the bride, with Princess Eugenie getting married in two weeks. It is reported that Sarah and Prince Andrew are helping pay for the wedding, but how much does Sarah actually have in the bank? Sarah Ferguson, 58, has had to help foot a big bill this year, the wedding of her youngest daughter, Princess Eugenie. Eugenie is marrying her long-term boyfriend Jack Brooks Spank in a lavish weekend-long affair early next month. The wedding is reported to be costing around £2 million, but most will be footed by the taxpayer as security costs. However, the rest will be paid for by the Yorks and the Brooks Banks. With such an expensive wedding bill to pay, how much is Sarah actually worth? According to the richest.com, Sarah is worth around $1 million, which is approximately £751,000. Sarah was once the official Duchess of York, part of one of the richest families in the world. But her marriage to Prince Andrew broke down in the late 90s, with the couple divorcing in 1996. It is claimed that Fergie didn't receive a huge payout, and knew she had to work hard to keep up her lifestyle. Since the divorce the 58-year-old has kept her name firmly in the public eye, working as a writer, public speaker, charity patron, brand ambassador and television personality. She has worked with countless brands over the years, endorsing products and speaking at events, all helping to build her bank balance. She has held contracts with British Fine China and Porcelain Company, Wedgwood and Cosmetics Giant, Avon. Perhaps one of the Duchess' most lucrative deals, she held a decade-long endorsement with Weight Watchers, no doubt contributing to her $1 million net worth. Fergie has also dabbled in writing, having written various books including two autobiographies. She has also hosted radio shows and the 2009 ITV reality show, The Duchess on the Estate. The controversial TV show saw the Duchess journey to a working-class estate in Manchester for a fly-on-the-wall documentary. This was followed by another called The Duchess in Hull. Fergie still currently lives with her ex-husband in the Royal Lodge in Windsor. The two also own a £13 million chalet together in Verbier, Switzerland. It is believed she also rents her own apartment in the expensive Eden Square in London. Before joining the royal family Fergie had a string of jobs, including working at a PR firm. Her story is very similar to that of Kate Middleton, who worked before marrying Prince William and banked a huge pre-wedding net worth. It was meant to be an olive branch but the Queen's invitation to Sarah, Duchess of York to join the royal family during their annual summer retreat at Balmoral has turned into a right royal disaster. New Idea has learned that the weekend turned to chaos as an explosive row erupted between Fergie and Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall. Fergie and Camilla came to blows at Balmoral last week. It was an enormous row that absolutely no one saw coming, a palace source tells New Idea. According to insiders, the Queen had invited the disgraced former wife of Prince Andrew to Scotland ahead of her daughter Princess Eugenie's wedding in the hope that all the family could get used to the Duchess being back in the royal fold. But despite the Queen putting her differences with her former daughter in La Serra aside, she wasn't counting on the Duchess of Cornwall and Fergie brawling after a build-up of over 20 years of simmering tensions. It seems that Fergie has never really confronted Camilla over the pain and heartache she caused Diana over her affair with Charles, explains the royal source. Fergie and Diana were close friends and she saw firsthand the anxiety and depression that opening bracket Camilla and Charles closing bracket affair brought to her and it's always churned away inside Fergie. Despite Diana and Fergie falling out towards the end of the princess life, the pair were extremely close at one point a fact which the Duchess of York has never forgotten. 
Diana was one of the wits I knew nobody made me laugh like her, she gushed in an interview with Harper's Bazaar. In fact, Princess Diana was instrumental in orchestrating the romance between Sarah Ferguson and Prince Andrew, with Diana taking the chance to matchmake by inviting her future sister-in-law to a party at Windsor Castle back in 1985. So the fact that Fergie would want to defend Diana over Carmilla comes as no surprise. Just one year after Diana had set up Fergie and Andrew, Prince Charles began secretly seeing Carmilla behind his unsuspecting young wife's back. Diana was also busy looking after their two young sons. And now, in the run-up to the 21st anniversary of Diana's tragic death, Fergie has finally let rip at Camilla. Fergie couldn't hold it in anymore and really let Camilla have it during after-dinner drinks at Balmoral, continues the source. She and Camilla have never seen eye to eye, but being at Balmoral brought back a lot of memories of Diana and all the time they spent there together so it was only a matter of time before she let Camilla have it. They really went at it. Fergie didn't hold back and told Camilla she had Diana's blood on her hands for all the pain she caused. No one really knew where to look. It was a fight that no one's seen before within palace walls.